Hello Very and nice. welcome to Slam Fire Radio. This is episode 378 for August, uh, October 29th, 2020. <laughs> Not August. It's a little bit colder than that. I'm one of your hosts, Adriel. And I'm another one of your hosts, Yukon Strong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the hunting gear guy, I guess. I'm hunting. Yeah. Something like, Adriel. Adriel. There. Are you yeah. there? I can't see you. Huh? I'm, I'm yeah. just, a, you can't, you can't even see this because deer, like, you can't see color. So this uh-huh. is camo. This is all camo. Is it? Yeah. I could wear this oh. into the bush. No problem. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I didn't know what to dress up as. So I decided I was going to go to Yukon Strong. Because this is what I, so I have a picture of him and me together, right? Mm-hmm. And he has a SIG hat on and he's got his uh, CCFR firearms right shirt on. And I'm going, hey, I can do that. I got all this. And it was like, <laughs> I, didn't know I was going to be on tonight. And it would have been a really short show if it wasn't because nobody else is here either. But mm-hmm. you, Camel. Anyways, so I said, I'm going to be Yukon Strong. I'm going to send them to him too. <laughs> I put a filter over top of me uh-huh. and it, like I look like I actually look like him right now if I actually you know me as Kelly I look more like Jason Gallon I should go get a I sh- should go get a, actually you know like a, a plaid shirt on I can change out halfway through send a picture <laughs> send a picture to Jason say hey I'm going to you tonight on the show anyways hi everybody hello uh yeah why don't we uh, why don't we do a show the Slamfire show here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what we did in guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. Uh, this week they have the Leupold Mark IV 6.5 to 20 on sale. So these are on clearance right now. How much? They are twenty eight hundred bucks. Hmm. But they're fancy. They're the Mark yeah. IV uh, ERTs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're uh, uh, extended range tactical and uh, their first focal plane. And very, very fancy. Very fancy, nice. fancy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got like yeah. that Christmas tree reticle thing. Mm-hmm. Go, oh man, I gotta, I gotta show this Christmas tree reticle. Cause we, sometimes we say Christmas tree, but like that's a, that's a decent Christmas tree going on yeah. there. Yep. yep. And uh, we were talking about that on the weekend. So when you have something like that, it's actually, you can use it when you do the 45 degrees, canted, different things like that. Because when you're starting to do PRS and you got to shoot off a barrier that has the cuts and holdovers and different things like that, that'd be awesome for that. Mm-hmm. Just in. Yep. I, uh, it's, yeah. I didn't think about shooting on a 45 degree with... Uh, with PRS, and I guess that yeah, you would have to combine the ballistics and the holdover, and hmm, you betcha. That gets weird. Yeah, it is weird, and it's stressful, but it's fun. You should do it. I could just shoot a deer like that. I could just like angle my gun and and shoot at a deer with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could do that. But why would you? <laughs> I probably won't. No, I know. No. Anyways. Yeah. So uh, what did you get up to this week in guns? Well, uh, so on the weekend, this past weekend, I, last Thursday night, I was packing up and getting ready to go to London. I went to London, Ontario on Friday afternoon, drove in, uh, had a drive through Toronto, which was oh so much fun. I got to London about nine o'clock at night. 10 o'clock at night, somewhere around there. Anyways, uh, for Maple Seed last weekend. So it was at Kremlin's uh, Sportsman's Association. So uh, Rick Woods is our contact at the range. I just wanted to say thank you to him. I'm going to give him a shout out later anyways. But um, saw him. Uh, we got up at uh, 6.30 in the morning to set up. So we went to the range and we had a couple of, we didn't have that many instructors on Saturday because there was also a CRPS match that was going on at the same time. Bad planning on my part. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so got up at 6.30 or, or got there for 6.30, set up in the dark. Um, but Rick was fantastic. He actually had a generator there and we had lights and first range ever that I went to that had a burn barrel that was going in the middle of the range. <laughs> It was a little cold. Um, not as cold as you, though. Uh, I put on the layers. <laughs> I had five. I had five layers on, but it was still impressive. 13, Fourteen degrees in the afternoon, so um, yeah, I don't think it was as cold as you have been. So, and we had a great day. We had oh, 
one relatively new IIT. We had uh, Greg Weiss came down as well from Ottawa, so that was a long track for him. Um, but uh, he held, he was our senior IIT, and he was he did a really really good job. So uh, we had uh, like a, uh, we also had a brand new IIT too, Dave 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 S. Uh, great day lots of fun we had some excellent shooters we had six riflemen by the way we oh now that means you two. have more riflemen than i do this year i know. just hold on i'm not, I'm not done yet anyways uh ken Thiessen also came out uh wanted to say hi to him he's one of my absolute favorite people in the world he's such a nice man and we were talking about the fundamentals of um, marksmanship and coming out and doing it and you know doing the maple seed at 25 meters and, and you know you don't have to calculate ballistics and you don't have to calculate windage and then I said but if you want to do something that you want to do that with Go and see him. <laughs> he runs the courses. So Ken Thiessen is actually the general manager at uh, Bullseye uh, London. Uh, they changed their name recently. What is it again? Bullseye, Bullseye North. North. Yeah, Bullseye North. So both him and Rick Woods uh, shoot or actually work out of there. And um, yeah, it's always really, really good to see Ken. Ken's actually a sponsored PRS shooter, long distance F-class shooter. And he is a good shooter. Anyways, he was one of the ones that actually became a rifleman on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we also had another event at Kremlin. Uh, this one was the Canadian University Shooting Federation. It's the last event for them for the year. We had a couple of uh, university students on the line, but we also had Emily Brown, who is, or she is the well, provincial as well as national champion uh, for trap on the line and as well as her partner who is also you know he's a provincial national champion as well and it is we were talking about it and she said it's very 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 challenging because shooting rifle is total opposite of shooting trap right mm -hmm. well, especially so. um like marksmanship focused rifle like this Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, it was funny because we, I could relate to her because she was saying, I can always see the people who show, shoot rifle when they come out to shoot clays, right? Because they're fall. And I'm going, yeah, that's me. And I said, I've had to literally beat it out of myself. Not don't watch the end of the barrel, watch the clay, watch the clay. And uh, so it's the total opposite. She was amazing she stuck through everything she was determined she was going to be successful uh she had one of the oh, enemies she had a i can't remember what it was she had a bushnell but it uh it uh, it had uh i think it was out to 36 and it was um magnification oh. plus it also had you know with the um it was just it was a little very bit fancy scope. It, it was very fancy. Everything first class. Everything was first class. So we fit the rifle to her, and uh, I made some recommendations uh, for it. Uh, we also had, um, as I said, we had a couple of university shooter, er, shooters on the on the line. Plus, we also filled out the line with uh, people from the club as well. We could have actually had another event and filled it. Uh, there was cool. people that there was people that kept coming in. Uh, they had uh, a mu some people doing muzzle loaders. Uh, right beside us it was a little noisy um, but they came over and they had a chat we kept having people come in see what we were doing and they were really excited about it we had the club president club president participated on a Saturday and he just thought it was like the cat's meow and he wants he wants us there all the time now and what else um, yeah it was a really really good day we had so remember I said we had six uh, riflemen on, on the Saturday on Saturday we had five more on the Sunday and two were women. So we had two and we had the high score for also on uh, the Saturday, Sunday was a, a woman. She did shot a 237. Her, boyf her boyfriend just barely made it, but also <laughs> I'm going, it's going to be an interesting ride home. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then we had another couple on Saturday. It's both the uh, husband and wife and they both um, became riflemen as well, and they actually—they don't actually shoot rifle. They sh they shoot um they shoot trap and skeet too. So it was kind of <laughs> interesting. That was really interesting. I, and we had a couple of youth shooters as well. Uh, it was just a really, really, really good weekend. And on the 
Sunday, we had so many IITs that it was almost like we were tripping over each other. Um, but it was like, it was still fun. And everybody got a chance to try out new points of instruction. And they did so great with them too. And it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. It was probably, probably one of my most favorite. I keep saying that every time we have Every time we have an event, I say, it's one of my most favorite. It's one of my most favorite. But it is, uh, oh, so I don't know. Think, have you ever met Rick? Oh, yeah, you've met Rick. Rick Woods? Yeah, you've met uh, him. I'm pretty sure, yeah. 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 Anyways, so his, um, his wife, uh, Jess, she is somebody who's also a shooter as well. And she used to go down to the uh, courses down in in Rustic Irish, and she's been to the charity shoots and all that. But uh Anyways, that was before they got married and I had kids, but just stopped by with the kids and and um, it was really, really great to see her. And we were talking and, tell, and, and the decision is next time we're there, she's going to actually shoot and Rick will watch the kids. So <laughs> it was really fun <laughs> to see her and she keeps getting more and more beautiful and it's just, uh, I missed her a lot. So it was great for her to be able to stop by. Um, but yeah, anyways, Rick... I just love him to death. He's the guy that actually taught me um, my handgun fundamental course and also the uh, the active killer defense as well. So he's very active. And as oh, I would have uh, I would have been on the show when we interviewed him then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just love the guy. And what else? Mm, that's about it, I guess. Uh, on and then I obviously. On Wednesday nights, uh, we're back at the Trap uh, and Ski Club in Kingston. And uh, we had, so Kelly and I went out, um, usual shoot. We had one of our new field officers actually join us. We did an interview uh, with her as we were doing our skeet night. And also her son joined us too. So it was fun. And uh, so I have an issue. Okay, so I actually have been consistently shooting about 18 to 20 clays per each night. There mm-hmm. we go, right? Which is actually not bad when you really think about it. But, okay, so the first time ever that I've cleared station one, I usually have one. And it's just like settling in and I usually don't get one. But anyways, so cleared station one, get over to station two, high house on station number two. That is my issue. I've tried different holds and it's... Uh, for the last, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it has been. It's just, it's burning my ass. I can't get up. So I'm trying different hold points and I'm always behind it. So I went from third hold to actually half hold. I'm, I'm still working on it. And I actually, I can't, I have to close one eye because I start to go cross eye. So. Yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to work it out. Uh, that is my nemesis. High house station number two. That's my. Uh, like, I don't know. I don't know how like a, a dedicated trap range works, but can you just sit on that station and it just pound like clay after clay yep. after clay after clay? Yeah, you can actually. Yeah. D- you don't have to do the whole. Um, so you don't have to actually go through. We typically just go through and go mm-hmm. through the different uh, stages, um, but. If you want to, instead, you can just sit there and just stay on that one. And that's what I kind of been thinking. I used to actually yeah. never miss it, and now I'm missing it. So it it just just burning my butt. So yeah. If that was me, I would I would I would sit at that at that one and just yeah. hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. Because there's something like yeah, you're you're saying you're behind it. Like just to to know what your hold is, know uh, well, where it, you need to aim on on that one for for the speed it's moving. <laughs> it would be nice to just like hammer that in, just drill it. Well, I've been trying different different things. So my hold point, closing an eye, opening an eye, because originally when we were getting our, when we originally got some instruction from, a, you know, one of the Canadian champions, right? He came mm-hmm. in and he gave us some private lessons. And um, yeah, so he said, hold both eyes open. So I was doing that. And um, yeah, I stopped doing that because we are just, we 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 sucked after. Are you are you right eye or, or left eye dominant? I'm right eye dominant, but and I'm I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have to close my eye 
uh, and look with my dominant eye. Because if not, I start to get actually, so I start with movement. I figure it out. Uh, Matt Pomeroy, who's the club president, and I were, were talking about it. And it's that high house. I have to close my eye if not, or I'm going to have to actually buy um, uh, the, um, the shaded glasses. Kind shaded of glasses. Wouldn't you, like, because I think with, um, especially with clays, don't you lose your depth perception if you, if mm-hmm. you, close off your one eye it's like with pistol um i i keep both eyes open and i just yeah. you can you can see it that quickly right i've i've got it underneath my uh my left eye with shotgun uh you you get the crossing but the problem with me is that i'll sometimes want to use that one and i'll pop that on the target and that is actually what entirely. happens and i start actually doing this right but you so that's like what happens. right eye dominant though so you like you've you've got all the like all what the chips are in in your corner kind of a thing yeah, I know, but I'm weird. <laughs> That's what it is. So we figured it out it's with movement, and but from here to here, from one from the high house where it starts out to about one third, I'm not tracking. I'm not losing. So and actually, by the time that I do see it, I have to actually play catch up. And uh, so, um, I'm learn. Uh, my holds are pretty good, though. My sorry, my um, leads are pretty good. It's my hold at that one station. And that just pissed me off yesterday. So anyways, so that was about it. And then I get there, like we have, we have somebody there and Kelly's Kelly saying, yeah, we're going to shoot with Kelly and she's going to kill and <laughs> I'm going, thanks. <laughs> 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 and I sucked. <laughs> anyways, I didn't suck that bad. Yeah, I did actually. I sucked pretty bad after the, uh, uh, <laughs> no, Luke Goodham. It's not a permanent shark. He hits actually uh, eyebrow pencil. Anyways, um, but yeah, that. So last night we uh, we still had a good night. Uh, I told you that the uh, the Trap and Seat Club they're they're holding Wednesday nights into November because of COVID. So and they turned on the lights last night too. So you also I have to get used to actually shooting at the point where there it's the sun's going down like the sun was literally down right and the lights are coming on so my eyes have to adjust too so i missed one because i couldn't see it was actually really dark and i couldn't see the clay so missed one because of that but other than that it was it was fine and the other thing that i did too was i so I have gone hunting with Kelly uh, out at her place. She has the duck pond there, and I got two of those wood ducks. And and uh, the Kincaids, I was telling Adriel about this before we actually um, came on the air. But, um, yeah, anyways, the wood ducks, they got smoked on the weekend, and they got basted with some preserves and, you know, lovingly, you know, smoked on some apple wood, nice hardwood for few hours and then kelly brought me my ducks last night and uh yeah so i had one for supper tonight and i don't like duck (laughs) (laughs) it's like there's no meat there (laughs) and i don't really i don't like i don't like i don't like duck you gotta like wild game you gotta cook carefully because the the wildness of the meat um well yeah it can turn you off of uh of of wild meat (laughs) That's why, yeah. like with duck and and that kind of thing, a lot of people will will uh, uh, make jerky out of it. Yeah, it's a little um, it's a little bit more gamier, obviously, than than you know other um, raised duck. Which I actually I don't mind raised duck. I really like foie gras. I'm a little expensive. A little apparently. bit hard to do that to the, to the wild ducks. <laughs> yeah, I was force feed them here, <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I have another duck breast here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to give it maybe to Kelly. I bring it back to Kelly's place. We're going, I'm going to her place, but I'm going to go like if I if I okay. Here's the deal. I know how to sh- I know how to hunt. I know how to actually. We're good, right? And I can eat it if I have to eat it. It's not my most favorite thing to sin. Maybe so was- you got to try it cooked a different way, though. Like, well, what if you made sausage? If you make sausage out of it, it'll be there's, fine. There's not enough meat on there to make a... It's You'll like, have to kill a bunch of them. You'll have to kill, like, 20 ducks. Like, I've got... Just... <laughs> <laughs> like, but it looks beautiful. It does. But it, it's kind of like... 
I don't know, it's not my favorite thing. I did eat it. I was good. I was eat taught always taught to eat with it's in front of you, so I did. That's why I have to go to the gym regularly. Okay. That is it for me. What about you, Adriel? What'd you do? Oh, I got a Vortex Venom and I put it on this gun here. So uh, uh, for the audio listeners, I'm holding up this uh, Gray Birch 12-inch barrel Red Dot Ready receiver thingamabobber, and it's got the uh, the Vortex Venom on top, and it's very nice and uh, compact. And I think <laughs> if I was to go um, for grouse or something like that, yeah, yeah. I might take this out because I don't need a scope to do grouse. And it's nice and lightweight and uh, compact. I could put this on a sling, put it on my back, and it wouldn't snag on anything. It would just stay yep. nice and out of the way. So, did you see them? their post today? Was it today or yesterday? Today? No. No? They're, they're actually, they posted your rifle right there and saying that the whole entire rifle, the, the whole build, you're just about ready to actually mark it up. Oh, they've got so those all stocks those ex- now too, right? The stocks right. that we were talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. So mm. everything that all the extra parts you put into that. Mm-hmm. So you know how it was all before it was almost ready. Well, now it's ready. It's gonna, gonna be gonna ready, be sell- and they're nice. gonna be selling it. So all the work that you did, mm-hmm. they're gonna actually now just sell that to everybody. And, mm. Yeah, I don't they, mind doing the work. Like assembling a twenty twenty two is like it's very really very easy hard yeah yeah it's not like a it's not like an ar where you've got to like put pins in and little springs and detents yeah. and that kind of, it's just like sl- you can do it in five minutes i think you can do it in five this minutes. is true mm-hmm. by the way mine got shot on the weekend by a couple of people and yeah it's a rifleman maker it's now officially called a rifleman maker well it was a rifleman maker before but mm-hmm. it's a rifleman maker now uh no issues really the more that it's being shot the more better it's just better it's working mm-hmm. so mine um I, I i don't know if it's the chamber or it's the bolt it was having issues with getting the, the rounds all the way in like it would it would be just just a, a smidge back and i don't know if that's the extractor like just not hitting the barrel properly and like giving a little bit of resistance um I, but um, but it wouldn't okay. it wouldn't pull the round out, so I don't think that a, the ex- extractor soy was uh, was going around and, and grabbing the rim as well. That's uh, so I think that's I think that's the bolt. I think that's the bolt not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And it's, and they're brand new, so I think I just need to run like a. I need to get like the cheapest ammo I got and go run like a crap ton through it. Right. So mine was doing it a little bit at first. And mm-hmm. now it seems to be working fine. And I uh, went through, cleaned up the extractor. I, yeah, ran a little bit of a bore brush through the bore, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be bueno. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah, lots of fun. This, these red dot, uh, red dot rifles are really fun. Uh, I hit the range with my brother and his, uh, oh, yeah. uh, his wife and, uh, that was good. I used that time to set in my six, five for hunting. It was already kind of set it in, but I wanted to set it in for some specific ammo and it's good to go now. Right. Um, I also sighted in my M1 Garand in 308 for hunting. So I, I, I and here's what I did to cite it in. I loaded it with some hunting <laughs> ammo. And yes. I shot it at 200, and I started hitting the little plate. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. We're good. Yeah, that'll do it. Mm. So so I have a question for you, Bethan. Mm-hmm. When are you going hunting? Uh, November 14th, I think, is going to be. like. So this weekend is the first. I, I, I could go on the Sunday, but I don't really like hunting. Like uh, Usually I'll go for a weekend. I don't like hunting the Sunday because if I get a deer in the Sunday afternoon, Wow, I just mess it like okay now you gotta do all this work and then I'm leaving a deer at my dad's place and I gotta head back to the city and I don't really want to do that and then the weekend after the 7th I've got a three a three gun match so I think the 14th 15th or the 21st 22nd somewhere in there mm. yeah I think I'm just gonna there you I, go. there's a there's an, an American holiday in there somewhere so maybe I'll I'll go and I'll, I'll take that American holiday as well because that would be Thanksgiving yeah, American Thanksgiving. Yeah, American Thanksgiving, or are you talking Memorial Day? 
I don't care. We're, whatever the holidays the Americans get. There's two I'll different. Take, I'll, I'll so once both. once near the end of November, so it's around mm-hmm. the 20, 20, 24th, 25th, that's mm-hmm. the Thanksgiving um, because it's really close to Christmas. And I'm thinking, what the hell did they do that? I don't know. Um, and then Memorial Day is obviously the same thing as our Remembrance Day. So The 11th? Yep. Mm, that doesn't work for me because that's like in the middle of the week. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was really happy to to see the the M1 uh, working with my hunting ammo. Cool. Um, yeah. Here in Alberta, our our limitations on semi autos are five rounds max, regardless if like what the heck it is. Um, like five rounds for a semi auto for big game. Period. So what do you do for an M1 Grand? Uh, you get one of them five round end block clips. So. Um, I've got one of those in my order from Brownells that is going to come to my place sooner or later, I think. Uh, like they mailed it fast enough, but what, what was the, it's at a facility in Canada. And what's that mean? I don't know. Like, because it's like cross border, they don't, they don't tell you what's going on. It's like, yeah, it got to Canada and then, uh, I don't know. It'll get delivered probably. So. Yeah, I, I hope it's not because there's a, there was I, I I did get a couple of eight round end blocks in there. Uh, I hope that um, nothing stupid is happening with CBSA because CBSA <sighs> has been doing some dumb stuff with mag capacities. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the guys on I think it was on Reddit uh, was mentioning he had a, a ten round Tika mag uh, get seized at the border, and he really? had to like dispute it. Yeah, he had to dispute like, hey guys. Uh, it's for bolt action rifle, so <laughs> figure your figure your stuff out. Um, I um, hope I hope just, uh, just my let you know, mm-hmm. just let you know, CBSA, they don't know what the hell they're doing, right? They don't know the gun laws. Well, I assume it's just like some paper pusher that doesn't like just kind of knows stuff. I, I assume mm-hmm. incompetence is is part of the part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I said we were talking about it on the weekend, and people were talking about how uh, textiles were part of this as well. And their whole CBSA is holding things back right now. So I'm going, really? It's mm-hmm. weird. But, mm-hmm. anyways, you were talking about so it's someplace in Canada right now. Well, like they say that it was received on the 25th, and the expected delivery is one to 12 days. But I guess, like, that's like pending. CBSA taking a look. So I have, I have no idea. It might be on its way to my place. It might be like stuck in some CBSA officer's desk because it's got evil eight round grand end blocks in there. Um, which if you don't know, the eight round end block clips, clips are fine in Canada. Um, it's got a, a, a specific exemption. Right. Do they know that? No. Just I, if it not. comes down to it, I will mod uh, an end block uh, clip to hold five only you just you zip a couple cuts in there you bend these two tines over you get five easy yeah. but yeah. it has the exemption by the way stacy is watching hi stacy hey stacy oh stacy said it's veterans day sorry memorial days is in may it's veterans day memorial is what for, for anyways there's two different holidays they have for the military we only have one that's it i work most of the Canadian holidays and they take off the American ones. Uh, let's see. I, I sell into the U S so yeah, I, I, I go by their holiday schedule, not ours. Uh, and then I've got a three gun match, not this weekend, but the weekend after, I don't think I have anything planned this weekend. Oh, I guess I do. I'm going to do a, uh, we have a range meeting on Friday and, oh. uh, I think that's it. I think yeah. that's it. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on a order from Tenda, order from Wolverine, order from Brownells. Um, should get some of that stuff uh, at some point, and uh, we'll talk about it on here. The Brownells one has like a bunch of 1022 charging handles. Oh, that's the other thing I've been working on. Uh, a huge article on uh, building a custom 1022 with like here's where you buy all the stuff in Canada. Here's where you buy all the stuff from in the U.S. Here's your options. Here's what they are. Um, like itemized down, can like you, a, a, just a big monster. Can you post that on our website and also on our? I have a website okay. where I post this kind of stuff. I know. <laughs> I can post okay. the link to it. What you yeah. could do is you could post the link to it. Why don't you do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Did you see this? I got that in the mail too. 
along with my face mask that has CCFR. But I got my new tankard. I forgot to tell you about that. I'm going to have lunch on it. But anyways. Lunch. Sorry. Is <laughs> lunch going to be whiskey? Is it going to be <laughs> liquid, liquid lunch? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully all that stuff comes in. And uh, I don't think I have anything else. I think for three gun, like I was, I was going to run like some silly guns, but I think I'll just run my regular stuff just because I haven't run it all that much this year. And I'd rather run like my purpose built stuff for purpose built competition. Um, I was thinking about like maybe running an SKS. Maybe I'll run that dot 1911, but you're too competitive. You know what? Well, I am, but I I, and I, and I just don't like shooting that dot really right now. I'd, I'd need to shoot it a lot more before I got to the point where I liked it. That's true. You were talking about that too. Yeah. Uh, guests really liked it though. When I brought, when I brought guests to the range and they, and they shot that and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you can, it's pull it up dots there, pull the trigger brother and your brother yeah. and his wife. Yeah. They really liked it. Yeah. Cool. They liked the, like the dot gun. Um, my brother's wife really liked this guy and as well, the one with the scope, she really liked that because she yeah. could like see the target, press the trigger, get some hits and they were, they were see? Good hits, so. And that's how you engage people into shooting. People are saying people need to learn on art sites, art sites. No, they need to actually be able to see the target and be able to know that they've hit it. And then they actually will be engaged and then they'll keep coming back. Yep. Just saying. Yeah. We ran some iron sight, um, the GSG 1911, the 22, Okay. Uh, as well as the Tokarev. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello. Pretty snappy and like pretty bad, but yeah. uh, they're they're both into like uh, FPS shooters, like video, video oh, games. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So um, I I always try to bring out a couple of of guns that are like in those kind of games, uh, just so they can see how bad they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right. I think uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Yeah. Remember Jorgen from last week in his email? He's watching live. Oh, they found us. Hi. There you go. Yeah. Anyways, and people are talking about my beard and how my, uh, how my, you know, growth hormones are working out. So it's very nice. Full. Yeah. Test, testosterone's full. really working. Yeah. 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 So anyways, I think uh, mm-hmm. it's supposed to be our Halloween show. We're not very Halloweenish. This we? is how, yeah. That's why we're this, we're we're not just dressing up for for fun. Well, we are actually. Yeah, but we are. It's Halloween also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing my camo. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> all, right. all right. Upcoming events are sponsored by Telos Alpha. Telos Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical. They help with business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. Learn more at telosalpha.com. Uh, no news today. No news this week. Slow news week. It is a slow news week. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, yeah, it is a slow news week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not much. I didn't see anything. Look. Nope. nope. Uh, there is, and there's no donations as well. There was nothing that was posted today. And so that's it. It's bye. Show's over. <laughs> Uh, let's get into our sponsors. Uh, okay. uh, Bolt Action Coffee sponsors the next uh, section. Uh, Slamfire Radio is an, a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. Uh, coffee is roasted in small batches and some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Uh, go to boltactioncoffee.com and use discount code SLAMFIRE. Right now they have their 11th hour limited edition roast being sent out. Right. So they just posted about that, and they said, if you still order today, tomorrow, I think it is, mm-hmm. that you can still get it in time. Uh, but that's it. I think they're only doing like 200 pounds or something like that. I am one who has ordered it. It's really excited about it. It's a little bit more expensive than the normal roast, but hey, small batch. And literally- ammo, it's cheap. Uh-huh. Like mm-hmm. seriously, right? Gunnies gunnies complain about the prices of stuff. Ammo. Yeah. So coffee. Get some good coffee. I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> I'll take it from here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh yeah. New gun stuff. So um I'm gonna pull up a couple here. Uh, let's start off with this one. 
Okay. So this is Profit River is uh, bringing a few of these in. They're heritage manufacturing Rough Riders. They're a revolver carbine, and they're two hundred ninety-seven dollars. No, wait. They said it was going to be more. They said it was going to be more. I can't remember what price. Four seventy-nine. This is U.S. pricing on here. So if you want a revolver rifle thing in bobber that takes twenty-two LR, uh, that's kind of interesting. I'm Good. not like into like any cowboy stuff, but uh, I thought I'd bring it in because it looked Rough Riders really model interesting. Over. Hmm. Uh, here's one that I'd be more likely to buy. Uh, Tenda has hand grenades. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, they've, okay. they've got um, inert copies made from genuine molds. So the mold is genuine, and they've uh, wherever they bought big, them. It's just a big chunk of metal. That's all. It's it a is. big chunk of metal. Big chunk yeah. of cast metal, and yeah. uh, uh, they use. Uh, they've got a head, ring, and spoon assembly on them. Uh, they've got them in lemon, baseball, and pineapple style. I really want a pineapple style one. Yes. I really want a pineapple grenade. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not ordering it unless I've got some other stuff that I really want to order from them. And I like qualify for the free shipping. So who knows? They'll probably be sold out by the time I get around to it. Mm. Don't think so? Mm, I don't know. No. No? No. no. Weren't grenades, weren't they specifically mentioned in the OIC? This is not a grenade. It's a chunk of metal. I know. I'm just saying, though. Wasn't it? I, I know. It's a chunk of metal. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying. And it was. You could, like, it's still a weapon. You could throw it at someone. It probably hurt a lot. You know what? <laughs> Anything is a weapon. It's all about intent. We need Ian Runkle on here. Mm. Uh, this next one, I haven't seen these in Canada yet. So this is the first time I've seen them. Uh, it's a Ruger 57 pistol. Uh, mm -hmm. Also at Tenda. Uh, so this, this uses the five, seven ammo, five, seven by 28, uh, that the FN does, except not at FN prices. FN is like, wah, like yeah. eye wateringly expensive for a polymer, uh, pistol. And this one's only $940. Only. Only. Which only. like is still pretty steep, but, uh, not compared to the FN. I wonder what the ergonomic is like, like the pistol grip. Look at it. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Probably I'm fine. Not. You need it's to scroll just... down. I can't scroll down. Huh? I said, you need huh? to scroll down. I can't scroll down you on want, You don't like different pictures? You want that want picture? Different... Yeah, that picture. Yeah. This doesn't look good from the point it's of view. It's straight. It's straight, non-comfy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, if, if, if you don't like, if you think that 9mm is like too cheap and you're like, man, I wish I could have more expensive ammo. Like that, I, I kids just can't find anywhere. Why? This is the pistol for you. This yeah. is definitely the pistol for you. Uh, Speak, mm -hmm. Speaking of ammo, we should start looking at ammo deals for people and putting those in the news. Oh, uh, I'm telling uh, our listeners right now. Like, if you need nine millimeter or two two three, you probably want to buy some right now because sure. that sh that shortage is coming here, and it's only going to be another month or so until until we're basically out until we run out. <laughs> and then after that, uh, it's going to be super duper expensive. Like the prices in the U S are outrageous right now for ammo. Yeah. 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 I saw, uh, yeah, I saw some st stupid pricing for thunderbolts down there for 22. I'm going seriously, <laughs> stupid <laughs> prices like thunderbolt. I know. Just horrible american pricing too like twice the price it is here for canadian and in american it was just horrible anyways uh hey speaking about ken Thiessen and bullseye north yeah they've, they've got the churchill pump shotgun uh it's 12 gauge 15 inch barrel and it comes with the shockwave grip i think the bird's eye grip is is really what that is a bird's yeah. head and not in bird's eye bird's head uh and then the other the regular stock as well uh, these are on special for two twenty nine. Oh, it also comes with a scabbard too, so you can like put it on like a holster. You can like holster your shotgun and drive around with it in the back of your <laughs> walk no. around your property with this <laughs> stupid long heavy shotgun like hanging off you. I mean, I guess you can't with your pistol, so you might as well do it with this stupid shotgun, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are kind of neat. 
That's really selling it, by the way. That's the stupid. It's two hundred and thirty dollars, though. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know, why not? Kind of, kind of pricing, right? It's not so expensive yeah. that you know you'll be disappointed if you do, if you can't use it. Or you'll be disappointed if you only wear it around the the property uh, a couple times. It's two hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. What do you want? Who cares, right? Who cares. Speaking about cheap stuff. Uh, this is the yeah. uh, Spectre Ballistics has their WK180C enhanced charging handle uh, that probably won't f- snap off your uh, your bolt. So that's kind of neat because that's that's again been a problem that uh, that some of the owners have seen out of those uh, WK180s, specifically the screw in style. The screw in yep. styles have been snapping, uh, and this uh, probably won't because I think it's just a bolt with like a 3D printed outside bit on it, like this knurled really? piece. I think it's just, yeah, I think that's just 3D printed. Yep. Really? So, like a, a nice quality bolt and yep. this piece around. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which is kind of neat. And then the other thing to mention is that uh, Black Friday is coming up. That's going to be November 27th. Yes. Okay. So, so maybe hang on to some shekels for that because there's going to be some sales on for uh, for Black Friday. If you're looking at Trigger, for example, like Trigger Tech, Tech usually does uh, a screaming Black Friday deal. Um, hmm. Like I got a I got a Trigger from them last year. I think it was like 170 or something like that for a Trigger Tech 3.5 pound Trigger, which is whoa. yeah. Mm. And then there, you know, all the other uh, retailers ha- usually have sales. I can't yeah. imagine there's going to be any good sales on ammo, just because they don't have to have good sales on ammo. Because they don't have any. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So also, uh, um, Russ was also talking about the fact that primers and mm-hmm. other components are not going to be available too, because mm-hmm. people are are going to be hoarding that. Stop hoarding, or come and see me, and let me come over, and you can load for me. I think that's what needs to happen, right? Nine millimeter, especially. Mm-hmm. Twenty-eight gauge. I'm looking for twenty-eight. Oh, twenty-eight is really what you need. I done know. There. I yeah. know. Why, Adriel? Why? Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to. You should get some primers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, how's the oh, actual yeah. ammo? Is it? It's it, it. That's not one that. Like, there's not gonna be any panic. Like, oh my god, it's gonna be the apocalypse. I need to get some twenty-eight gauge ammo. Like, no Americans are doing that. They gotta no, have, have. They gotta have, have some some availability for it, right. Right. Well, I don't know. We got some cases on order. Right. I split whatever was available with Kelly, hmm. and and so we have a couple of cases on order. But that's a. Hmm. But yeah, we'll see. Are you are you keeping your hulls now? Hmm. Because I'm stupid. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, you should keep you should keep your hulls. You should just keep your hulls. You know what? I'm gonna start keeping mm-hmm. my hulls, yeah, mm-hmm. so that we can, yeah, Animals. yeah, yeah, just in case. All right. Uh, yeah, and one of the other listeners, I think, uh, Jorgen, 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 Jorgen. Can I can I mispronounce this any other way? Horgan. Uh, I'll uh, I'll just keep throwing out ideas. <laughs> this is first time uh, listening or watching <laughs> live. Be nice to him. Okay. You don't want him to leave us. Uh, we we massacre everyone's names though. That's that's a thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is me taking revenge on the world for however many times people screw up my name. Uh, <laughs> Everybody he, calls you Ariel. <laughs> Ariel or Adrian or yeah, all sorts of. Um, <laughs> he was mentioning that uh, ammo bin. Uh, that one compares different uh, re- retailers to check for the lowest price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, a really good uh, website to uh, to check out. Yeah. Uh, and then let's get on. Do we have the main topic today? We're going to talk no, about like uh, we were, uh, Trevor, zombie defense. Zombie yeah, defense. Trevor wanted us to talk about zombie defense. He was supposed to be here, um, mm. but he's not. So, yeah, this our annual um, Halloween topic is about basically zombie defense or, you know, monster defense or ghost defense or some type of defense. <laughs> I think this year is actually, you know what, this year is, is it. We thought we were going to have a zombie apocalypse. So, well, you know what we should do. We instead we had the liberal apoc- 
apocalypse. But anyways, yes, what? what we what should uh, get any uh, live listeners that want to dial Ooh. in. And uh, yeah. 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 Why don't we do that? We said we were going to do it once a month, but let's do it for now because, you know, Ben Dave couldn't be on tonight and Trevor, well, he's doing, he actually is doing things for school. So why don't we see if we can get some people on And we have a bunch of people that are, are watching us live. So why don't we do that? Okay. One second. And while you're doing that, Chris, hi, Chris. Uh, Chris said that the Ruger 57 is available in a number of places in Canada right now. And all the reviews uh, that have come back so far have complained about the trigger. So not sure what that. Trigger's not good. Yeah. So that's what he's saying. Hmm. Feed the zombies, throw out the liberals to feed the, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Jace sound is correct. So Jorgen. Jorgen? Okay. Jorgen. Now we know. Mm-hmm. Now we know. Okay. I need a Canadian phone number and then I'll be able to Yes. So Mike Share H that. says the FN five point seven. Uh also extremely exit compared to the Ruger. Yeah. And it looks like a Caltech. All right. <laughs> And uh, no, I'm not pretending to be Trevor. Although, you know what? I could, I could pretend to be Trevor. I look like Trevor tonight too. Uh, I'm looking, I'm trying to be Yukon Strong. <clears throat> if I actually, you know, weight, lift more weights, anyways, but then I could be Yukon Strong. But, or they said if I was trying to be Trevor, I should be more grumpier. So I should, I don't like the listeners. I hate you. <laughs> Is that working? No. That's what he says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I've, but uh, this is actually kind of scary, and I want to wipe this off because it's not working for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put some uh, dial in uh, notes into the uh, Facebook group there. So, again, our, our topic is if you haven't been on uh, for previous years, uh, we talk about uh, what firearm we would use for zombie defense and why. Uh, typically, wow. like we've talked about, like ten twenty twos, twenty twos, that kind of thing. Because you need uh, a twenty two, mm, you do the ammo density uh, right. and, and all that. And, kind it, of stuff. and it rattles around in the head, right? Just it bounces, right? I, that's the bounces. myth. It bounces back and forth and back and forth. Inertia isn't a thing. It, it just nah. keeps going. It just keeps going. Yeah. The bullets yeah. are elastic, and they just keep going back they, and forth. Bing bing bing! It's Inside. like those pinballs. Yeah. Pin- Anyways, so also 12 gauge, just blow the head right off, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that would be something that would be good. Ammo and right now, it's terrible though. Yeah, but you know what? 12 gauge up close, they're done. You could Head's rack gone. it, and then the, the zombies are scared. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or they're only after brains, anyways, right? So you can, <laughs> you can be just hang out with people who are smarter. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's uh that's an idea i guess i like the idea of like cheap mill syrup like mill syrup for for your uh friends and family like sks's and mosins and that kind of thing okay not because they're good just because like who cares and they're better for distance like if you had to make a long that's range true. shot on a zombie zombie head how far do you think you'd shoot a zombie head with a 22 Reliably, two hundred. Reliably, one fifty. Uh, yeah, one fifty. One fifty. Yeah. Mm. Hard at two hundred. Yeah. I guess a twenty-two could be suppressed better though. So if you got like a yeah. suppressed twenty-two and you're shooting from like two hundred, like who knows where that's going, right? We can't have suppressors here in Canada. No, the <laughs> zombie apocalypse. Uh, there's, there's no rules. There's no rules. Want. Everything's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're gonna go. So here's the deal. Mm-hmm. So with the zombie apocalypse, we're gonna be at the on the roof of the Costco, because right. It's the mm. best place ever because mm-hmm. there's lots of food. There's camping equipment. There's all kinds of, and it's almost right across the street from me anyways. So um, we'll go there and then we'll bring all the ammo and all the guns. But yeah, 22s, 22s and then shotguns are a little bit more closer. Although mm. I don't have any ammo for the 28. <laughs> All right. What else is everybody actually going to be shooting? Mm -hmm. How about a three fifty three fifty eight? Win mag, Winchester. Yeah, yeah, Winchester lever action. One to four by twenty scope shooting one fifty eight XTPs out of reformed three oh eight brass. 
Mmm, mm, that's a big old bullet. It's got some got some stank on it. Easy to keep topped up because you can just keep loading it, side loading, keep it mm-hmm. hot. Yep, keep it topped up. I like that idea. Uh, magazine capacity not great. Mmm, and there's no way to top it up real quickly. Mind you, like if you ran like mags and like a, a chest rig or something like that, you're going to run out of those things eventually as well, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe it is like maybe something that's like slow to fl- feed and that kind of thing would work. Ooh, flamethrower. Chris says flamethrower. I was just going to say, get it with the flamethrower. Mm. have to have gas though, gasoline. So and you want to use gas for other stuff too, right? Right. So you want to actually go to a Costco that has a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> So you can keep topping up. <laughs> no? Mm. Yes? So, yeah. um, yeah, flamethrower. Chris, you're you're a smart man. You really, really are. Jorgen's saying, like, with the wider bullet, easier to hit the brain stem. It's, it's a zombie. <laughs> Maybe they're the kind of zombies where it's like, the, like anywhere in here, it's like, nah, it's got to be the brain stem. Then maybe you got to hit that part. The rest of it's like rotted away. Could be. Could be. No? I'm just going to shoot them with a shotgun. Just pull the head off. <laughs> <laughs> Done. That's an option, too. Okay. But it has to be a little bit shorter than 150, 200 meters. And not so. Yeah. Anyways. Hmm. Um, so what else you got in your old uh, tickle I don't truck? Think, I don't think I'd use like a WK or anything like that. Um, Long range. What would you use for long range? I got a six five, but it's so heavy. I wouldn't want to carry it. It's it's twelve. I just I weighed it recently. It's twelve pounds. I have a twelve pound hunting rifle this year. But you're gonna probably actually just have it, you know, put up the tripod on it and just mm-hmm. shoot it off of that, right? Bipod, yeah. But bipod. I don't have I don't have bipod. a tripod set up for for a rifle. But um, I don't have that much ammo for it. Yeah. I'd run out. I'd run out of ammo very quickly. Now the M1 Garand, oh, I got like uh, ten end block clips or so, all fully loaded. Like that would be okay. Yeah. I would use that. Totally use that. It'd be That's... nice if you can get your other ones though across the border. My other, my other which ones? Oh yeah, my other end block clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, so you can load those up too. Actually, um, we're all wrong. A GSG 16 with hundred round drum mags just loaded right up. Just like three four of those drum mags for like sustained rate of fire barrel's not going to get up like melting hot you'll still be able to have some accuracy with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you can just auto, rank on one of those yeah full auto 22 may yeah hollow points with drum mags that's from cool tannerite okay tannerite mm-hmm. what are we going to do shoot them with I mean, that's right. for like when you when you get past the the initial like scary zombie part, and you get closer to like zombie land. Like now we're doing tricks kind of a part, You're going for like kill of the day kind of a thing, <laughs> kill of the year. That's when you get the tanner right out. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. If it's what? a zombie apocalypse, Kurt's just mentioned here. I just forgot. You just take the AR fifteen out. <laughs> no rules. What? <laughs> I completely forgot about this. I, no, no rules. Yes, the AR-15 comes out. Oh, yeah. Heck with any of my other ideas. We're not doing that. <laughs> Those are all terrible ideas. If the shit is hitting the fan, we are actually taking all. We're taking everything out of the safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're taking. Yeah, we're cutting all the locks off. Nobody mm-hmm. cares. The drill right? comes out. The drill. What are you doing with the drill? Some of my magazines are uh, are Canadian limited. Oh God! And can yeah. be we'll, uh, we'll Canadian un- unlimited um, in uh, five seconds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the RCMP that are listening, this is for the zombie apocalypse. We are not currently. Correct. Doing this. <laughs> this is not inciting or uttering threats or I don't know what are the other things like like get you in trouble. None of them. <laughs> <laughs> what about a ten twenty two Gatling conversion cat? Hmm. For like volume of fire, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Notice that we're really, really focusing though on like twenty twos. But that's because they're like light, and you can keep them fed. 
and we can actually put all kinds of ammo in our pockets and just. I could, I could get like a right. duffel bag and put like five thousand rounds of twenty-two in there, and I could carry it. I cannot do this with any like that's, with. I cannot put five thousand rounds of two two three in a duffel bag and carry it. That's right. Too heavy. Okay. Too heavy. Mm-hmm. And if you're down in the U.S., by the way, Costco again, they sell ammo. Just saying. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like Costco would be a hot spot. Highly contested. I don't want like a quiet <laughs> spot. <laughs> the top of Somewhere the with a, a real decent roof on it. That's hard to get up to. Mm. Or like farmland. Farmland. Farmland, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. definitely farmland. So if it's not zombie apocalypse. What if it's actually like monster? Monster. What kind of monster? Last last year we did like all of them. We went through like vampire and uh, I don't think we talked Frankenstein. That would be an interesting one. Okay, let's do Frankenstein. Because mm. like I feel like he would keep ticking. You would have to he's, like really he's pat, already, like put he's some already damage dead, in. Right? Yep. Yep. Already dead. So he's not. How did they kill him in the movies? Uh, I think it was fire. He's afraid of fire. That's he's it. afraid of fire. So the flamethrower gets a big up right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or a short barrel AR, or an M44 right. Mosin, mm-hmm. right. something that mm-hmm. like really throws the fire when you shoot it. Yep. Mm-hmm. 375 and up, yeah. Some big like shoulder busters. Maybe some slugs. I feel like slugs would, would slow them up. Buckshot would probably do some uh, some really good <laughs> damage. Dangerous yes. game calibers. <laughs> I don't have any of those though. I no. had like. I don't have anything that's like big, bad, X other than slugs. That's about as big and bad as my stuff gets. Well, we can make friends though. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. if something does happen, people can come over. They have to, one, prove what they have, how much they have, and also bring some toilet paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, yes. They'll, they'll, they'll all get an assignment. One guy is like, dear, the toilet paper dude. And this other lady, she's going to be like, you got to bring your sewing kit because like our clothes are going to fall apart eventually. We're going to need to like fix stuff and like patch stuff. So it gets uh, dual purpose though. You can actually sew somebody up mm, if they're injured or mm -hmm. you can actually mend clothing. Yep. I can sew, I can sew up someone's like cut, but it won't, it won't look very good. And I can't run a sewing machine very well either. I just recently, I just recently tried running it again and I'm like, I'm just bad at it. I remember home ec as a high schooler and it was easy. And now it is very, very hard. And I suck, and I'm stupid. I don't know how to run a sewing machine, so I need I need someone to run a sewing machine. I think that's a very critical part of this. What if there's no power? You, you just know. need needle. You've got threat. the crank on the side. You can just crank that thing. Hook it up to a belt, and like I don't know, have someone like do the thing. I don't know. I don't know how sewing machines work. Hook it up to a Magic. bike. Oh yeah, hook it up to a bike. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heard saying werewolves. Oh, that's tough. Werewolves, we already talked about, though. It'd, it'd be like the silver bullet, right? You need a silver bullet. Needs, okay, so you need something that's easily castable then. 38. Cool. 38. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do 38 every day because that's super easy to cast for and super easy to reload for. And See, werewolves are the same thing as if you're going out, you know, going out to shoot coyotes or, or wolves, basically. Correct? Yes, mm. same, same caliber, just casting. Mm. I feel like werewolves are big, and you'd see them coming. And you could, like, with coyotes, you got to, like, take your, take your shot at, at distance or, like, be sneaky with them. I think with werewolves, they'd be, like, big and loud. You could just, like, hammer them with whatever. Revolver at 38 as the defense. That's, like, they're too close at that point. I wonder if you hey, could I- take them. Do you, could you wound them with something else? Could you start them off with something like even that's not silver and just like, you know, anchor them? Yeah. Also, like I, go for that shoulder, that shoulder shot and like anchor them there and come up with the revolver with the, the special silver bullets. Because you wouldn't yeah, want to, you'd want to like throw silver down range just to, just to kind of slow, like when, when you're too far away from them. I'm not thinking that I would really want to wait until they're actually within range so that I can shoot them with a revolver. But wouldn't like, you just like use whatever like long gun you got hanging around, just like shoot to wound and then get in there with your revolver for the for the final coup de gras with the silver bullets? 
to grow off. How much yeah. silver do you have around your house that you could remelt into bullets for whatever gun you're going to be reloading for? Well, we don't really need those forks and knives anyways, do we? No. <laughs> I don't have any silver forks and knives. Mine are all stainless steel. I don't even think I have any silver stuff in my house. I'm going to be hard up for silver. I'm going to like savor that, like keep that stuff on. I'll use my other stuff for, for getting close. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a lot of silver. Great. This is a risk. Neighbors. This, this is a, a, a deficiency for survival in case of were- werewolves. You'll you know have to getting- fix this deficiency. You need to go to Costco. They have silver jewelry. (laughs) Mm. All right. So they were talking about people who are vampires. Vampires need Mm -hmm. a wooden stake through the heart. So Russ was talking about, or sorry, Jorgen was talking about, or Jorgen was talking about launching it out of a 12-gauge blank. I guess. Hmm. You could get one of them golf ball launchers for your AR and, uh, and just stick like a, Maybe like a you could uh, make like a sabo for the for the stake. Oh, that would get some velocity going. Yeah, yeah, and it would handle the size. Mm-hmm. 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 Those are fun, by the way, to play with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not that would do it. The golf ball launcher, not launching stakes. Although this could be a new sport. <laughs> could, could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there's a bunch of other stuff around uh, vampires. Like, can't you use like holy bullets and that kind of thing? Can you just splash some holy water on some stuff? uh holy water that burns them Same okay thing but like put, like put that into the hollow point freeze it and then shoot it it's probably not gonna hang on it's no. probably not gonna stick in the bullet mm. no some other idea a mm. uh, garlic garlic <laughs> in the shot for a shotgun so buckshot and then with garlic and the garlic gets into the wound yeah they just don't like it. It little, pre-seasons little, the little vampires. Stew, the, the pre-seasons the vampires. <laughs> You're going to eat it afterwards? A little salt and pepper, there right? There's a debate about mm-hmm. if a vampire and a werewolf actually get into a fight, and the werewolf mm-hmm. bites the vampire, and the vampire bites the wolf, werewolf, do they become each other, and which one's first, and which one's oh. like the chicken the egg? This they're is like, a great debate. Their weird little genes have to like fight each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy water paintballs. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. A gel, a gel blaster with yeah. just bless the gel. She's like, yo, here's a big bucket of gel blaster balls. And then use a gel blaster. I don't have one of these, though. So no. that's a problem. Another deficiency. I can see us actually making a list of stuff we need to buy now, just in case we just have a, case. either a zombie apocalypse or we have to actually, you know. Vampire family. apocalypse. Mm. Hard one. Well, it's kind of hard to. You just rewatch Blade. Just watch Blade like one through three, or however much which many there are, and uh, you'll get it from there, right? Yeah. Or yeah. or all you have to do is actually watch what is it? Um, um, the one with the vampires that glitter. Oh no, not that one. No, Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. That's it. Yeah. Why did you know that and I didn't? I don't know. I'm younger than you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, too good. Too good. Sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, yeah. Couldn't, couldn't let that slide. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you got to watch Blade. You got to get some sunglasses. And you got to get like a duster, like a full. A leather duster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get a duster. That is like super important. And you got to get the nice fade. The f- yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's got to be right. kept the whole time. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, um, any of the monsters or keep moving? What about a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> How do you defend against a ghost? Oh, uh, I was, I was, ta- uh, I have a squirrel moment here. I was talking to someone on, uh, on Reddit about, um, they're talking about like putting some more legislation well, on Facebook and that kind of thing to prevent people from spreading like things that are wrong. It's like, ah, it's too late. Like 30% of Canadians believe in ghosts. Like everyone believes in something that's like verifiably not true. Uh, So like, what's the point? What's the point of like trying to hold Facebook to count when we've already got so much misinformation? You can watch history channel about and and watch about how aliens made pyramids. Like who cares about any of this uh, other stuff? People will believe what they want to believe. By the way, yeah. right now, that whole concentration camp thing, that is like all over Facebook right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Anyways, just saying, but ghosts, how do you defend against the ghost? And uh, also um, Kurt is saying a super soaker with holy water. Yeah. The, before they uh, yeah. don't like put away the pottery, all the pottery supplies get put away. Don't make any vases <laughs> or anything like that. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Start singing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's like a, a proper firearm you can use against ghosts, though. No, there isn't. I don't really no. think so. Electricity, I think, and plasma. So have like some glass bowls and like matches and the microwave ready there, and hopefully they go into the microwave and you can like get them with the plasma. Have you ever done that? No. You can, like light a match and like put it under a cup and then Bye. put it in the put it in the microwave, make some plasma. What? Yeah, you can make plasma <laughs> in your microwave. Oh. It's cool. Okay, no. Mm-hmm. I didn't do that. No, I've never done that. I'm just thinking about it. I had, I, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about it. And I'm thinking about the, um, you know, the Ghostbusters and not mm-hmm. crossing streams and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make one of those, one of those ecto, what is it? Ectoplasma. Ectoplasma. Plasm- yeah. Mm-hmm. You could just use it in the nineteen eleven because it was uh, it was made by the uh, gun god John John M Browning, right? Mm-hmm. John yeah. Moses Browning, yeah, yeah, nineteen eleven, okay. yeah, or an M one Garand should work just because it's made by Browning and and he's 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 a god of some kind. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And the game okay. Game. Okay. <laughs> rock, rock salt, twelve gauge salt shot. Yeah, salt can do something, right? If it's in a circle or you make a circle in the ghost, they're both yay big. You probably want like a cylinder, cylinder bore. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, are I think we, we're. <laughs> are, are we just sound, sit down and have a Ouija board? Ouija board. Uh, this is Supernatural 101. Okay. <laughs> you guys are supposed. To, there was. There, you guys were supposed to come on and uh, and tell us all about this. We're just learning. Yeah. People yeah. are just, just. We've been doing it three years in a row, but like this is, uh, you know, we're still amateurs at it. We haven't had it to test it out. That's why. Oh, <laughs> well, yet. Yeah. It hasn't, it hasn't gone, it, gone full on. <laughs> Although this year, as I said, was the closest it's come. People were freaking out in March, right? They were thinking that the zombie apocalypse was coming. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Time to go in the woods with the SKS. Yeah. yeah. And you're absolutely right. If something does happen, yeah, the air is coming out. Breaking mm-hmm. out the little, yeah, we're going to be breaking out some two two three ammo. I think so. It just yep. makes it easy. You can hunt with a two two three too. Yeah, I and mean, not like it's not the best for it, but it'll do. Mm-mm. It'll do. It'll be fine. All right, let's keep moving on with the show here. Aye, right. uh, listener. Actually, hey, you want to do? No, people bought in Cabela's. Oh, do you have that ready? Uh, kinda, sorta, yes. Why okay. not? Yeah, cool. yeah. Let's let's do that. Um, let's chit chat about that. This is. I'm gonna be just lazy. I'm just not gonna bother looking at. Um, I've I've got like hunting gear guys stuff and uh, listener purchase stuff. I'm just gonna like talk about them both. Uh, Nikon Pro Staff Seven Binoculars. Uh, let's see here. What's this other one? Okay, before you actually uh-huh. go, uh-huh. Chris. Chris W. wins it. He says, for the invasion of doctors against guns, face masks off and speaking moistly. <laughs> <laughs> speaking moistly. I can do that. Oh, that is like the best thing ever. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, what else we got here? Hot Shot Blaze Took, Nikon Pro Staff 1000 Rangefinder, uh, Redhead Youth Polyvester, Polyester Safety Vest. I've got one of those. And oh. a full feature fleece vest. Looks like someone was buying some stuff for their kids. Hunting. Yeah. Taking their kids hunting. Hunting season's coming up. Yay. Take your kids. Slime fire hunting. stuff. Vortex Diamondback HP one inch rifle scope and a master lock combination lock. Mm. Yeah. By the way, I have. So if anybody is looking at locks, make sure that best thing ever is to actually just do combo locks and you just need combo because you're not going to forget your keys. Yes. 
you, get combo uh, locks. Combo locks are the best. Combo locks. Combo trigger. Combo cable for your uh, cable case. locks. Yeah, yeah, because the cable is useful for more than just that case. Whereas if you get like That's a regular cool. like clasp lock, uh, they don't fit on some of the bigger cases. The cable locks work on everything. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, um, yeah, just get the combo locks. Do it for every single one, the same combo, so you don't have to, you're not forgetting stuff. It's so much easier than going to the range and then having to come back and come back and get your keys because you forgot them. So just mm-hmm. do that. Uh, did you actually see Ian Wrinkle's video about zip ties? Yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. That's a good video for people to, they're look, not to look at. Legal trigger locks because no, there's not. no key. That it doesn't matter what you do, it needs to have a key. He was saying that uh, that you could like screw it into a box where and like cover it in concrete, uh, but that isn't safe storage because it doesn't have a lock on it that you can right. open with a key. Which is interesting because I've had firearms shipped to me and by the retailers with zip locks on them. And but it in was shipping, that's incorrect. different. That's different in shipping. Okay. Because it's just a box. It's a it's a Schrodinger's box o mystery until you open it up. <laughs> it's like I don't know what's in this box. Oh, it's a handgun. Okay, cool. You don't even need the zip tie on it. Look at that! It's a handgun. Mm-hmm. That's what's right. sitting like, is like resting next to my door here. Ah, huh, neat. Okay. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? A Ruger ten twenty two in charcoal with some CCI oh. Velocitor ammo and some Barnall rifle ammo. Not bad. We endorse the 1022s. Oh, there's another 1022. Another 1022 and some Lunker Hunt swim bait and a Cabela's heavy duty grinder. Oh, I wonder what they're doing with the grinder. Mm, grinding meat? I'm wondering mm-hmm. what meat, by the way. I grind deer meat. I usually do like a. Uh, I usually do a bunch of ground, like the, the crappier meats, like the, the, the front legs and that kind of thing. They're all stringy. So I just like grind it and then you can make, make sausage, sausage or you can make jerky. jerky. I like the extruded dirt jerky because you could, you it's easy to mix and get real consistent. And then it takes a lot less time to dry. So when you, uh, mm-hmm. you use like a big, like it looks like a caulking gun. It's like a big jerky gun. Just pop it all onto the, uh, uh, grill and, uh, People like getting those too because they're not, they're not like tough because they it's ground meat. Yeah. Uh, next person got a bunch of federal black cloud steel shot shells, so they're gonna go duck hunting. Hmm. Uh, doesn't say what kind it is, so duck or goose hunting. Hmm. Couple more here. Columbia women's heavenly long hooded jacket and a oh. Ridge Hunter 2.0 hunting pack. <laughs> More hunting stuff. Yeah, looks season. like every looks like everybody's actually buying hunting stuff, but it's a, a lady's going hunting. That's good. That's awesome. The next one, or maybe it's a present. Shh. A Narinko JW twenty semi auto twenty two rifle, mm-hmm. and a Cabela's ten gun double door cabinet. Oh, somebody's Which one's starting the JW twenty. Somebody's starting a new new collection. Oh, that's that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I had one of those. The uh, the semi-auto takedown one. That's the copy of the Browning SA-22. Yeah, yeah. Uh. They're like... Uh, here, I'll show you what it looks like. Yep. Uh, Bring it up. Share that thing right there. One of these guys here. All right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. they're kind of neat because you can like... You, you They come apart like right at the middle there. Mm-hmm. And you can have the rear part loaded up, obviously only where it's legal to, to have the gun loaded, um, but super handy for uh, uh, hunting small game and that kind of thing. Neat. And that's all. That's, that's like a okay. couple weeks worth. I don't know. I just grabbed like a big chunk of time. And all right. We Thanks, guys, it. for yeah. ordering and supporting us. But also it's, it's interesting to see what people... I think that it's going to be seasonal too, right? People are going to be mm-hmm. ordering... We saw... If, what we see is a lot of deer or sorry, hunting stuff. So both I can see it duck and also deer hunting stuff. So yeah. Anyways, yeah, um, deer sausage, sausage with pork fat. Yeah. My uncle's yeah. Uh, got a bunch of uh, uh, pigs. So I usually just get the trimmings off of them because usually like that, the, there's some like real fatty stuff and he just throws it out. I'm like, no, no, no. 
Hang on to that for I, me. I for the deer. Full 100% pork fat ground up with deer for sausage or whatever what's, you're going to do for what's sausage. What's your ratio? Because deer... Uh, 30, deer if it's if it's like full fat, like 30% or so. Okay. Yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. If you went 50, it would be like way too greasy. Wow. But uh, 30... Deer's, deer's very lean, so yeah. Yeah, and it also depends on what kind of sausage you're gonna make. Like that's that's what I do for like a summer sausage, which is like uh, uh, bigger around. Yep. Um, ah, I'm I should do some sausage this year. Are you getting? Hungry? I should go pick up some um, some supplies. Well, I've also been watching this like barbecuing show on uh, on Netflix, and uh, I don't know American barbecuers or something. Right. I don't know. Okay, they like barbecue stuff. This, I don't watch a lot of reality TV, so I'm a little bit short on details. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to make some sausage. Make, make a bunch of deer sausage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full-service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, and Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. Tell them we sent you. Tell them that we sent you. Uh, let's see. Well, we've been kind of uh, going through the Facebook as we've been going. Kelly, do you want to take this one from James? Okay. So this is from James B., who we affectionately call Ginger Snap. He says, well, do I have a fun story for you guys? gals and slime fire crew so apparently he's talking to all of the listeners as well because it's plural anyways uh friday night my kids were uh working at a local scary hayride and i was floating around on a small dirt bike helping out fixing lights bringing water or whatever they needed uh kids were having a great time chasing screaming and scaring the locals awesome by the way the mini snaps are fantastic kids love them uh hi girls um there were quite a few people uh, going on the hayride and a tractor or two, a tractor with two hay wagons uh, with bench seating. Uh, you would go for a spin and see spooky cemetery, crazy clowns and small children running at you with crazy eyes with blood plastic, bloody plastic knives uh, scare a good human being. So I think that would should be and scare good human beings, whatever. Uh, so here's where the real story starts. With all the noise, uh, there was a coyote sighting in the field. Not a coyote ugly kind, <laughs> uh, more like a four-legged kind. And the owner asked if I could take a look. I said, no problem. Jumped on the uh, CRF 110 and went off. I think that's a motorbike. Is that a motorbike? I'm assuming. Motorbike? I don't know. Four-wheeler? I don't know. Anyways, he jumped on it. And anyways, I pulled up into a truck running uh, and high beams on. And I asked, uh, heard you have a coyote problem. Yes, there's one coyote running around uh, towards some kids over there in the middle. Instead of middle-aged man said. Uh, then I s- see the shotgun in his hand. I was dumbfounded. I'm thinking, is that a prop? Wait, that looks real. I'm thinking. What kind of jackass would have a real gun at 8.30 Friday night with 300 people around? I asked. Is the gun real? He quickly answered, yes, it's real. Dumbfounded again. I asked, what are you doing with that? He explained to me that he was uh, going to protect the kids. My jaw dropped. you like, I'm using a lot of drama. This, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, he asked if I was uh, hunting coyotes, which I replied, no. Uh, But I said, hunting coyotes at night is jacking. Big mistake, he starts saying. You know nothing and you need to leave. And I agreed. I left only after he started to unload and put the pump shotgun back in the truck. I did not want to escalate it any further. So I jumped on the bike and left. Oh, it is a bike. Uh, As I was leaving, he called me every name under the sun. Stupid son of a... He knows Jack blank uh driving towards the kids uh that coyote was running towards i started thinking again if i called the rcmp i wonder what charges would be laid they love charging for firearms unsafe storage careless use of a firearm and jacking wildlife and so on and so on wow this guy is a careless fud you'd lose your job because he works for uh he works for money handling services court fees would crush him and any man woman too 
Okay, I don't know where this is going. Um, the odds are stacked against him. Coyotes uh, attacking some kids, slim to none. Jackass with a loaded uh, firearm hunting a kid or kids are almost guaranteed. On a final note, I called him out on his BS and I would like to talk to him again, but he's too emotional and thinks he was going, doing the right thing, which is kind of dangerous. Now I see what Rod and Tracy have to deal with. Dot, dot, dot. Keep up the good work, CCFR. What's your opinion? Did I do good? So before I had the PS. So what do you think? What do you think? Did he do the right thing by saying, you know, what the hell? And told him that basically, no bueno. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't really know the details of the scene. Um, yeah. So I don't know if, like, you, you can't hunt at night usually mm -hmm. that's i don't know what the um uh what the hunting rigs are like in uh, in the area that he is um yeah. so our listeners are asking where he is too uh i think that it is in new brunswick pretty sure it's in brunswick mm -hmm. so i think the guy was thinking that he was doing the right thing because uh there's a coyote sighting it's an event where there's kids around and but the reality is this guy has a shotgun and there again there's kids around right so and it's at night and the regulations are you can't shoot at night so yeah i think he did the right thing you're absolutely right the coyote attacking kids probably almost slim to none because there's so many people around coyote would actually i don't think I don't, I don't know of an area where coyotes come anywhere near people like other than um, urban areas or semi urban areas and yeah. out, out in the countryside uh, coyote sees a person from any distance. They start running the other way. They even yeah. smell human. They don't, they, they're out. Yeah. I see coyotes in the city here quite frequently, but uh, they go after, they'll go after small pets and they'll go after, but they don't go after. Yeah. Kids. There, like it, depending on the province, there might be some like regulation where like you can use uh, uh, firearms at a season on coyotes and that kind of thing, just as in, in protection of livestock. There might right. be stuff like that, uh, but like I, I have no idea what the rules are like for uh, doing that at night. Um, okay. But I think he's also, I think Ginger Snap is actually talking about it. He's this guy was going to actually fire off a shot. It, to protect kids, but if it's going after, anyways, there's kids around. Mm, I mean, I I go hunting with kids and that kind of thing, but it, it really depends what it is. And like, if it's like a big crazy party with a whole bunch of people around, then it's hard to know where the kids are. And that's right. Yeah. And yeah. can you can you distinguish between a kid and also a coyote? Like, really, this guy is middle aged, right? Eyesight not that great. I'm just actually. <laughs> and yeah, Brian, you're absolutely right. Coyotes are coming into Winnipeg. They come into they 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 come into Kingston all the time. Mm -hmm. I see them all the time here. So yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, so he goes on to say, P.S. Coyotes are prairie wolves, and then he said, P.P.S. Uh, female coyotes call out and doesn't get a call back. It will have a bigger litter. Uh, hunter that kills a coyote, more coyotes are making more coyotes. Say that three times fast. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. Hunter kills a coyote, making more coyotes, making more coyotes. Yeah, no. they they kind of sell the population kind of self corrects. Uh, That's and, correct. And, uh, and makes up for hunting pressure. Right. Which but is kind of neat. Want, yeah. yeah. He wants me to say it three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So I think that you did the right thing. I think that James, you know what? If there was an issue, you guys would have been able to take care of it. Even just driving over, whatever. I don't think that Kai would have talked to kid. But It'd be nice if um, people could just talk through that kind of thing rather than be offended all at, at, uh, at it. Because I, I think like the two of them probably could have come to some agreement on like what's an appropriate no, or not an appropriate response based on what's happening. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to email the show and get a non answer on your questions, email uh, slamfire radio at gmail.com. Uh, Patreon supporters, if you want to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com, find us there and, uh, and you can, 
voluntarily help us. Uh, otherwise, if you're buying some hunting stuff for, from Cabela's and you're going to buy it anyways, just buy it online. Uh, you can do like the in-store pickup thing or you can do the online delivery thing. Uh, visit Cabela's via the link on our website and we'll get a little we cut. Get, we get credit. Yeah, yeah. The prices don't change for you. It's the same price as you would have paid otherwise. But uh, we get a little like finder's fee because you went there through us. Um, we've got the same yeah. thing happening with Amazon. Uh, every once in a while, I'm going to throw a couple of uh, uh, links onto our Facebook group and that kind of thing for different uh, different gear that's uh, firearms related. Um, and if you click on that and don't even buy that thing, but buy something else, uh, we'll get credit there too. Uh, shout outs, Kelly. I have a shout out for Rick Woods. Just want to say thank you. He's he listens to, so thank you, thank you, thank you for helping coordinate, set up, and be my point of contact and being there really early in the morning and starting fires for us. Those fires were started in burn bins, by the way, not actual you know fires out of control, whatever. Uh, so I wanted to say thank you again, and it was so great to see you, so great to see Jess, the kids, and I also wanted to say thank you to the IITs for all their help. They did a, an incredible job, and I'm really, really happy. Southwestern Ontario is starting. My dogs, by the way, might actually, you might hear them in a second because they're starting mm-hmm. to get frisky. Uh, so Southwestern Ontario is starting to get populated with IITs. I'm very thankful about that as well. So thank you. Fantastic. Yep. What about you? Mm, no, no shout outs this week. I haven't really been doing it much this week. Uh Check us out on Gun Owners of Canada, like us on Facebook, join the CCFR, and reach out to your provincial legislators about the upcoming handgun ban, and try to uh, try to talk to your local uh, provincial MPs just to see where they're at and uh, see if you can get them convinced to, uh, to not uh, push forward anything if a handgun ban comes in. And we'll see you next week. Bye!